Hey everyone, this is Oscar from Underdog and let's talk today about the mastering chain and specifically what mastering presets are you or aren't you using. This video is not aimed at those of you who already are familiar with mastering and who actually know what you're doing at the end of a signal chain. This one's more for the beginners who know that mastering exists. They might go into Ableton or whatever their DAW is, look for mastering presets, slap some of them on there, think that it sounds better and then get into the habit, and I would say the bad habit, of using mastering presets. Instead, if you are a music producer and you are in the process of making and constructing your own music, I would argue that you only need one plugin as the mastering plugin while you're working on your track and while you're perfecting the mix of your track. And that one plugin is a limiter. That's it. Any limiter. Literally any limiter in the entire world will do. And let's discuss for a moment the reason why that is. A few weeks ago I read a good comment somewhere on Reddit and I literally can't remember who it was or how to attribute it, so sorry uh, for not crediting you. But the comment went something like this. Those who think that they have a mastering problem probably have a mix down problem and those who think that they have a mix down problem probably have a production problem. So one of the things I want to do here is simplify your mastering process to be so simple and so under your control that you can then really look at your mix down process instead and understand how almost all of the mastering problems that you think you're going to solve in mastering should actually be addressed in the mix down and how the mastering is only there as the final step to eat up all your headroom. What am I talking about? Let me show you this in a diagram. So imagine here we have our recording space from minus infinity decibels all the way up to the maximum of the recorded medium, zero decibels, right? That's the space we have to work in from minus infinity to zero. And the volume of all our elements is somewhere in between there, right? So let's imagine that we're doing the process of mixing our track. And in this case, when I'm talking about mixing, I'm just going to talk about balancing the volumes of the elements. We're not going to talk about balancing the frequencies or balancing the stereo or whatever. We're just going to talk about volumes, right? So somewhere in between this minus infinity and zero, you set some element at a reference volume. Let's say you set your kick. The kick might be the loudest element. And you place that somewhere in the middle in terms of volume. And then you make sure that all your other elements are then set to the right volume compared to your kick. You are now balancing the mix of all your elements, right? And above all of these elements, there is something called headroom. There is the distance all the way up to the zero decibel. But while you're balancing the volume of these individual elements, you don't want to be up close to zero because that's just going to confuse the issue. You just want to make sure that the elements compared to each other have the right volume balance. This is the job of you mixing as you go while you produce. And I do think as electronic musicians, this is an important skill to have. Then on the mastering channel, we're going to put a limiter. And what the limiter is going to do is it's going to turn up the volume of this entire signal chain of everything equally, right? All the way so that it just kisses the top of the zero decibels just the top. Basically, you might say that this is eating up or removing all the headroom in your track so that at the end, when you export this song, it's going to be close to all the other commercial recordings, which are always going to be peaking around zero decibels. So all the limiter is here is a volume control. It controls the volume, also known as the gain. And it does the exact same as a utility plugin would. Now, the only extra benefit of why it's a limiter is that if the signal accidentally has a little spike that tries to go above zero decibels, it doesn't cause clipping. It just turns that down instead. And that's what we want to do with that mastering limiter, so to speak. We want that to just sit there maintaining control over the volume of our track so that if it tries to go too loud, it just catches those peaks and so it doesn't clip our speakers. And while you're producing, this is pretty much all that there should be on your master channel. You should be doing your mix balance and your production decisions all with the aim of, with this exact setup, getting a professional result. And it should already sound pretty great when you compare it to reference tracks in the same genre as you, provided that you bring down the volume of those reference tracks a little bit so that their RMS is at about the same RMS as yours. If you can get your song and your mix down to sound really great under those circumstances, this is a great position to then later on hand this track over to a mastering engineer who is then probably going to see how to tastefully push this a little bit harder into the limiter to get a little bit more squash dynamic range and maybe deal with any frequency issues that come up at that moment. 
but please, for the love of God, don't go straight up from the beginning of your music production career uh, slapping on mastering presets onto everything. Because all you really want is a limiter to eat up your available headroom to get your stuff to sound loud enough. But all of your production and mix down decisions, you want to be doing them with elements that have headroom in themselves. Let me briefly run you through this idea again, but in an actual production in Ableton. All right, here's a little production I'm working on for Face the Sun. And let me show you the loop. Okay, there we go. That's just a loop that's a work in progress. And let me show you now the thought process of the signal chain, right? So all of these elements are going into the master and on the master, all I've got is this limiter. And so let me, for, for starters, turn off this limiter and let's see what's happening. All of my elements together are going into my master and they're peaking, oh, sometimes a little bit above zero, sometimes a little bit below zero. So to avoid that, I could push down my entire signal chain and just work like this. That could totally work. And then I'd have to just turn up my speakers to compensate a bit, right? But what I like to do is I like to bring up the gain on the limiter, up and up and up, until every now and then you can see the tiniest little bit of orange there. There we go just every now and then, and preferably not more than like minus three decibels or something, the first little bit here. Then I know that my signal is loud, it's close to zero at the, at the maximum, but it's not being overly compressed. The limiter is not significantly changing the way that the sound, uh, the way that the sound appears to me. And if at some point I decide that on this master channel everything sounds better with an equalizer on it or with some any other kind of corrective effect on it, that gives me a hint at how I should probably go back to my mix down or my production choices even and make some changes in those production choices so that on the master I have very little left to do. That way the mastering engineer doesn't have to do anything corrective they can just kind of sweeten things or enhance the good stuff. They don't have to work so hard to fix the things that are negative about your mix down. And I know it's sad, but basically that means that anything from here under the audio effect rack, the mixing and mastering racks, I would just not recommend this, or at least not on your master channel. Go nuts on individual channels, but avoid this on your master channel, because usually all it's doing is putting a limiter on there, increasing the loudness, but in an uncontrolled way, where you don't know exactly how much loudness is being added. And because louder things sound better, just by how our ears are calibrated, you might end up thinking that everything sounds better with these masters mastering plugins, but really you're just changing your sound in a way that you don't have control over. So there, that's the role of the limiter in the mastering process while you're in the production phase. I hope this video saves you some trial and error from just making these rookie mistakes. If you find yourself struggling with rookie mistakes a lot, maybe go follow my Foundations of Electronic Music course. It's really made for absolute beginners to become intermediate level producers. Go follow Face the Sun on SoundCloud. And until next time, stay producing, be good to one another, and take care.